Welcome to another Remode Make Pack video. Today we're making a patchwork smock dress. This pattern's been designed to use up some of the smaller fabric ends that we've got lying around. It's a loose fit with the aim of layering up a t-shirt or jumper underneath for the colder months. You'll need a selection of different fabrics for your main garment, fabric for your lining, your paper pattern, paper scissors, fabric scissors, dressmaker's pins, your remote label, an unpick in case you make a mistake, some thread, a measuring tape, tailor's chalk, a large hand sewing needle and a button. Before you start you'll need to cut your paper pattern out. It might have a few creases from being folded up so iron flat if necessary. Make sure to cut along the line of your chosen size. It may help to draw over it first with a felt tip to keep you right. Now lay your patterns onto your fabric as directed by the grain line on the pattern. You can pin this or use your chalk to draw around them and then cut everything out, being careful to snip into or mark any notches. Remember to flip the pattern for your side pieces so that you cut two pairs in different fabrics. I've used a white and red check for one side and then a denim for the other. When you finish cutting your main bodice pieces, put them to one side and cut your lining in the same way. Again, paying attention to grain lines and pattern markings. Now we'll start sewing. Set your machine up to sew a straight stitch with a length of around 2.5 to 3. First of all, we need to make up our front bodice. Making sure to match notches and placing right sides together, attach your bodice left to your bodice front down the long straight edge with a 1cm seam allowance. Then attach bodice right to bodice front in the same way. Now we'll make up the back pieces. Take one of your back pieces and the corresponding side back piece and sew them with right sides together. Repeat with your main and back and side back piece. Press everything nice and flat when you're done. Now we'll attach the back pieces to the front at the side seams. Once you've sewn the side seam, pin and sew across the shoulder seam and then repeat for the other side. Next, pin right sides of the centre back seams together from the notch down to the waistband and then sew this closed with a 1cm seam allowance. This will leave an opening from the top of the neck to the notch about halfway down. It's time to start making up your lining. So it's the same process that we just did, sewing the side seams, the shoulder seam and then finally the centre back seam, all with right sides together and a 1cm seam allowance. Press all your seams nice and flat and then put this to one side for the next stage. We're going to make a rouleau loop now. So this is a short length of fabric that we'll use to hold the bodice closed with a button at the centre back. If you know how and you'd rather, you could always make a buttonhole instead. But to make the loop, cut a piece of fabric on the bias, 2.5cm by 5cm in length. Fold it lengthways, right sides together and sew closed using a half centimetre seam allowance. Don't cut your threads at the end, leave them nice and long because we'll use them to turn the loop out. But if you have a loop turner, you can cut your threads and turn your loop out now. If you're using a needle and thread like me, thread your needle now using the threads that you left long at the end of your fabric. Insert the eye of the needle into the loop tunnel and begin to feed the needle along the tunnel and out through the other end. Gently pull on the needle and as you do, the end should begin to roll into the tunnel slowly. Once it does, gently pull on the thread and that turns the loop out. Now iron your turned out ruler loop and trim the ends if they're a bit messy. You want the finished length to be about 5cm or a bit longer if your button is larger than a centimetre. Fold your loop in half and sew over the ends to hold it in this position using a scant 6mm seam allowance. Press it using an iron and your loop is now ready to use. Attach your rouleau loop to the left hand side of your bodice back up at the top of the neck with the raw edges of the loop flush with the raw edges of the fabric, again using a scant 6mm seam allowance. Place the loop about 1.2cm from the top edge of your bodice to allow for the seam allowance on the neck edge. Now sew on your remote label along the back neck edge on the lining. Next, you need to attach the bodice to the lining, so we'll start at the neckline. With right sides together, match the neckline and shoulder seams of the main bodice to the neckline and shoulder seams of the lining and sew them together with a 1cm seam allowance. 
When you finish sewing the seam, snip directly into the seam allowance through both layers, your main and your lining. And this allows the curved neck edge to relax and sit smoothly. But be careful to snip up to but not into your stitching. Understitch the neck edge by edge stitching both seam allowances down onto the lining. Understitching helps stop the lining at the neck from rolling over and showing from the right side. And if you're not sure about these terms, check the pattern key given on the sewing instructions PDF. Then understitching, you can sew over the top of your remote label here to help it sit flat. Give the neckline a press with your iron when you're done. Now we need to close our centre back seam. Pin the lining and the main fabric with right sides together, being careful to match up the seams at the neck and at the bottom of the opening. Sew the seam closed and then repeat on the other side. The next stage is to attach the bodice to the lining at the armholes. With right sides together, start pinning the bodice and the lining together by matching up side seams and working your way around to the shoulder seam. If you start at the underarm and follow the curve of the armhole round, making sure to pin your shoulder seams together, then you shouldn't go wrong, although it is easier said than done. If you get confused, take your pins out and start again. Sew the armhole using a 1cm seam allowance and then snip into the seam allowance, again up to but not into the stitching, and that allows it to sit flat around the curves. Understitch as far around the curve as you can, but you might not be able to sew the whole curve in one as it does get a bit tricky to keep it sitting flat under the foot of the machine. Repeat this for the other armhole, being careful to check that you've positioned everything correctly first, and by pinning the side seams and shoulder seam right sides together. We're finished with the bodice for now, so you can put it to one side and we'll start on the patchwork skirt. The technique's actually pretty straightforward, but if you want to, you can mix and match the fabrics to create your own style. For this video, I replicated the colourways of the bodice, but I added one small patch of the red check fabric near the hem just to personalise the design a bit. Basically, we're sewing smaller rectangles of fabric together to make one big rectangle. So start by cutting pieces of fabric according to the measurements given on the sewing instructions for your chosen size. It's important when cutting your pieces to pay attention to the grain line of the fabric. If you cut it off grain or on the bias, your skirt will end up hanging at an odd angle or being difficult to hem neatly. It just won't sit very nicely. It's a good idea to lay all your pieces out on the floor before sewing them together so you can get a good idea of how it will look and be able to work out the sewing order. It might seem like your skirt is way too big, but remember we're going to gather the waistband, so we need this extra width to add volume to the skirt. So once you're happy with the layout, start sewing your pieces together, remembering to finish the seams as you go to stop them from fraying. This didn't matter so much with the bodice because it was being lined, but the skirt isn't, and so it'll be prone to fraying. I've used an overlocker, but you can use a simple zigzag stitch if you don't have access to an overlocker. So once you've made up the skirt into its big rectangle shape, you can close the centre back seam and that leaves you with a large tubular piece of fabric. Now we'll start to gather this tube at the top edge, which is where the waist will be. Start by setting your machine stitch length to its longest length, so that's normally about five. Run a straight stitch the full length of the skirt along this top edge, about five or six mil from the raw edge. Make sure to back tack securely at the beginning, but don't back tack at the end because we need this end free to make our gathers. But leave this thread tail slightly longer than you would normally so that you can get a good grip of it when pushing your gathers along. Then sew another row of stitches just underneath your previous stitch line. If we've got two rows of stitching, it helps strengthen our gathers and if one of them breaks, you've got a backup. 
I gathered my skirt in one long continuous thread the whole length but it might be easier to do it in sections if you're a beginner or if you've maybe got quite thick fabric. Now holding tight onto the long end of your threads begin to push your fabric along the threads slowly and carefully. You'll see gathers begin to form. Even them out as you go and continue to do so until your skirt waist is gathered to the same measurement as your bodice waist. Again, check the sewing instructions sheet for your measurements. Grab your bodice again. We're going to sew the skirt onto the waist. Start by pinning the gathered skirt edge to your main bodice waistline, with right sides together and matching side seams to help keep you right. You can baste this by hand if you want to, to provide some extra stability while sewing by machine. Now sew these together using a one centimetre seam allowance. It might get a wee bit bulky here, so if you iron your gathers up towards the bodice afterwards. The next stage is to sew the line into the skirt. So this can be a bit tricky because there's a lot of bulk due to the gathering, but again, if you get stuck, maybe doing it in stages will help. To start, take one of the side seams of the lining, pull it round over the main bodice and match it up with the corresponding side seam on the bodice, making sure to place right sides together. Then keep pinning these two raw edges together right round the waistband as far as you can manage, being careful to match all the seams together. You should be pinning through the gather of the skirt as well, so this gathered seam should be sandwiched between the main bodice and the lining. Keep pinning and pushing your skirt up towards the bodice as you go. As I said before, it'll end up quite bulky, so take your time. And if you get stuck, just sew what you've pinned so far and then pin a little more. You need to leave a small opening in your waist seam, maybe 20 centimetres or so. So make sure to do this. Once you've sewn the waistline, the bulk of the garment will be inside out and tucked away inside the bodice. So we'll use this opening to get in, grab some fabric so you can start pulling everything back through this opening so that it's all on the right side. So we're almost there and it should be looking pretty good. Now we need to double turn and sew the hem. So start by folding the hem up by one centimetre towards the inside of the dress and iron it flat. Then fold this up again by two centimetres this time and this traps the raw edge of the original one centimetre turn inside. Then iron this flat too. So you should use some pins here to keep everything in place before you sew. So we're going to sew the hem down, working from the inside of the dress and keeping your stitch line very close to that top edge of the hem. Start at the centre back seam and once you've sewn all the way around, give it a good press with an iron. So if you paid attention to the grain lines when you were cutting your skirt pieces, this should have been pretty easy as you're simply sewing in a big long straight line following the edge of the skirt. Now we've just got a wee bit of hand sewing to do and then we're finished. First, we'll close the gap we left in our bodice lining. Working from the inside of the dress, find the opening that you left somewhere along that waistband. Tuck the seam allowance up into the body of the bodice and pin it to the waistband. Sew it closed, taking the pins out as you go. Then finally, you need to sew the button onto the top right of the back bodice. Work out the correct position by matching up that centre back seam and placing a pin through the rouleau loop onto the right back piece where the button will sit. Attach your button here and you're done. Thanks for watching and for supporting Remode. Please let us know how you get on. See you later.